Hello, I'm Jim Lynn. Welcome to episode 5 of Mr Lynn's Workshop. Wing spars. Today we're going to be making some plans, taking some measurements and doing some marking up of the new wing spars. So get your brew and let's go. So Anthony brought round the two new spars that he'd taken out of another wing of the Taylor Craft. Uh, this is the main spar we've just put on the workbench and um, we are going to measure the length. Now we have made a plan and Anthony's got it in his hand now and uh, we're going to compare the dimensions to that plan. So before we go any further I'll show you what the plan looks like. So this plan was drawn in pencil and the units are decimal inches. For instance, 127.75 inches is 3,245 millimetres. Now we had to convert them all because I don't have any means of measuring inches and I haven't had for 15 years. So um, the way we converted it was Anthony would read out the numbers, I would convert them and write them down and then we'd swap. Um, I would read out the numbers and he would convert them and we'd check that so to make sure we got it right and we didn't make any mistakes. Uh, this is the sort of thing pilots would do all the time. Now you notice that um, there's a large brown watermark on the uh, plan. Uh, I'd like to say that it's an original 1930s plan but it isn't. I spilt coffee on it and I spilt coffee at the end of the day so you can see that I forgot to record that uh, before we started. But anyway, here we go. Um, Anthony's measuring the length and I'm reading it off the, the plan and uh, we discovered that it's spot on. So we continue to work our way down, checking various points like um, uh, holes for things to attach to as we went along. So there are various attachment points and holes in this wing spa. Um, there's about six or seven um, places where something called compression struts are attached. And those um, connect the front spar to the rear spar, um, basically to cr create a stiff box. Since I made that video, Anthony's been round again, and this time he brought some of these compression struts. Those are the white tubes you can see. I've set up the front spar on the right, rear spar on the left, with the compression struts in place, so you can get an idea of exactly where they go. And uh, towards the far end, I've uh, set a wing rib, so you can see how they go as well. So anyway, back to the video. Also, um, you can see that black diagonal line in the foreground there. Um, that's where a support strut attaches and that goes down to the bottom of the fuselage. So um, if you think of the far end of the strut and that attachment point and then the far end of the, um, the main spar, you can see it makes a triangle. It's a very strong box. So we went our way along the spar, working our way along, checking every single dimension and they were pretty much within a couple of millimetres of where they should be. So we're quite happy that the drawing was reasonably good and that the spar was in good condition. So we can proceed on to um, start marking up the actual new wooden spar that we're going to make. So we'll do that next. But before we do that, we thought it um, might be a good idea to pick up the rear spar and overlay it onto the main spar and check that uh, everything matched up. Now, of course it should because it's just come off a wing where the compression struts were attached to it. But we thought, well, let's just check. Let's just make sure because um, there's some differences between the main spar and the lower spar. So here we are just lining things up um, in such a way that we can uh, see what we're doing. And uh, we'll just proceed to check off um, each each point between the front and the rear spar where things should match up. So that's what we got on with and uh, and maybe now we can get the, the new spar up and start marking it up. So after we've done, uh, had a look at those both those spars and taken some measurements, we then decided that it was prudent to go back to the drawings and recheck everything again. Um, some of the dimensions were slightly out so we had to decide whether that was important. Of particular note was the uh, tapering towards the far end there near the black bin under the wet bench. That taper was slightly different on what the drawings um, said it should be. So, I mean, everything's important in a wing, but we have to decide how important that dimension is. We're only talking about six or seven millimetres difference, but um, I think we decided that we would deal with that later. The main thing now is to get the, 
the new spars marked up so that we can proceed. So that's what we're going to do next. We had some uh, protective covering, covering the Sitka spruce spars. So um, moved that out, moved the lower uh, narrower spars out and lifted the main spars onto the bench. Uh, and then we um, decided that we had to think about whether we're going to do both at once or just do one of them. And I think we we're going to do one of them. Um, so uh, Anthony's asking which way up we needed to have them. Now, the, you can allow one or two uh, defects like resin pockets and a wing spar, but if they are, they have to be towards the, the underside of the spar, so uh, not the top side, the bottom side. So we, we made sure we got the correct one the right way round. We'd marked them up previously when we first came round. Uh, turn that one over so that the top edge is towards the left of the, the seam here uh, and then we thought right we've got that set up correctly so we can go ahead and mark out the length now the, the we're marking all the drawings from the far end towards the wet bench um, and the numbers decrease in size as we come towards this end so uh, yeah, that's what we're doing now so now having the the board what we thought was the right way around we then decided that it might not be the right way around so we turned it over again um, we're just uh, very careful to get things the right way around it's, it's important that all the defects should be at the bottom uh, and that the, the, the spar the wood is orientated correctly so now we're finally laying on the tape and I'm marking off the dimensions and Anthony's reading it off to me off the plan uh, not relying on our memory like good pilots we're using a checklist and it's I think 4934 millimeters from that far end and uh, then I'm asking Anthony to come and cross check that for me uh, again extremely important now we've measured from the far end which means that the high number, 4934, is at this end you can see in front of you. But that's the wrong way around because all the numbers count down from the right hand side towards this side. So we need to hook the tape measure as you can see here. So what I've done is uh, clamped on a little block just to allow me to hook the tape measure on. Now this piece to the left is actually scrap but we didn't want to cut that off yet because we need that for support later on when we cut a rebate. So now we can, you can see we've laid the tape uh, right along the length so the high number 4934 is now at the far end there. You can clearly see that that board is bowed so we're not going to be accurate so we decided to um, deploy our extremely high tech advanced regulation wood support devices. Now of course being pilots you have to confirm uh, strictly with the regulations otherwise a significant danger of possibly um, kebab box spillage. So that means that the um, black bin has to be at the right hand end and uh, if you're going to move the silver bin always make sure it's detached from the power supply, the ground support system, otherwise you look like an idiot. But um, of course um, you have to bear in mind that uh, we're under extreme pressure here. So uh, a little bit of uh, dimensions, checking out that it's not quite high enough, but then ignored it anyway. So now we're going to lay out the dimensions on the board. Um, it's quite simply uh, a matter of marking them off from the tape measure. So here I'm just uh, reading them off, marking them off, and Anthony's coming along behind me and uh, checking them. Uh, we discovered one part um, around about the middle doubler section that uh, the, the plan was just a little, little bit too small scale and we couldn't quite figure it out so we had to get a larger scale plan uh, just to make sure that we were getting that absolutely right. Um, it wasn't a particularly important piece but the wings the wing support strut attaches to that so we had to make sure we had things the right way around. So that's what we're doing at the minute, obviously deep in discussion. Now, of course, uh, watching two middle-aged blokes marking dimensions off a ruler onto a piece of wood can just get uh, dramatically exciting for a lot of people. So uh, I think we'll just move on to the next stage, which is a lot less exciting. Once we'd marked all these lines all the way along the entire board, we then squared them straight across the front face. Um, shortly, we're going to be taking the rear spar 
uh, board and laying that on top of this main board so that we can transfer the marks. Uh, but the first thing we did was to get the old spar and uh, lay it on top of the board uh, just to check that the marks that we've made on the new board lined up with um, the telltales on the old board. Uh, we thought that was quite prudent just to make sure there's no gross errors. Then we got the um, rear spar, uh, laid it along the middle of the main spar and uh, clamped it at one end so uh, it was secure and just worked our way along transferring the marks onto the top edge and writing the numbers down uh, so that we, we knew which uh, mark was which. So that's what Anthony are doing there and uh, once I'd done the marks Anthony went along and cross-checked them all. This is a, a neat tool, this comes from Veritas and it's called a saddle square and allows you to line up the short face with a mark on the top edge of this board and bring it down along to the face surface. Um, very good tool for getting accurate marks. So uh, that's what we're going to do, the entire length of this board. And then it's just a case of getting the big square out and extending those lines uh, once Anthony holds the board down. Just extend the lines across um, to from one side to the other, just in case we need to have the marks on the bottom edge. So the final task in marking out both these boards is to connect up the dots, as it were, um, to make the tapered sections at the end. So um, there's a couple of marks that we'd made and plotted out, we call them transitions, and uh, it's just simply a matter of putting the straight edge between the transitions and uh, drawing a mark. And that gives uh, our plot of the tapered sections. So here's the completed marking up of uh, one rear spar and one main spar. The word transition we've marked on there just means that the angle of that uh, line changes. Uh, the next word along is compression strut and uh, you can see we've marked the millimetres as well. Uh, aileron hinge, one hole goes on the right hand line and two holes go on the left hand line. That's why we've called it tripod to make sure we know where the two holes are. Uh, you can see the word doubler right edge there. A doubler is just a piece of thin aeroply, 1.6 millimetres thick uh, to be precise. And you glue that on to provide extra, extra strength where you're putting on a lot of bolts. Um, moving down to the, the left end, this end is the end that goes into the fuselage. And uh, that uh, leftmost line is actually going to be sawn off. Uh, and that means that uh, that's the end of the board. Well, that's it for episode five, everyone. In episode six, we might actually cut something. So until then, thanks for watching.